What's up, everybody? It's Rago. It's the week, Super Bowl week. Chiefs Niners. Fun Super Bowl coming ahead. We're gonna do a little fun and talk about the upcoming Super Bowl. Cover of the week. Not gonna get too much into the season, as in I wanted to, but I will look at that for next season. Hopefully, do a little more coverage on these ones. I hope everybody enjoys how we do this episode. Try and cover it the best I can. I'm not a huge stat guy. I didn't break everything down. Didn't get into too much of it, but I will break down the teams, offense, defense, talk about a few things. And I will also be throwing out a few ideas on some bets because I will be throwing some money on the game too. I enjoy doing it, and I would be going through DraftKings. So anything I can get uh, when it comes to having a little fun, a little extra on the game, you know, I'll definitely do it. Uh, as you can see, I'm one of the loss for the Eagles. They didn't make it. But... Uh, Made it last year, obviously lost to the Chiefs again, so the Chiefs are coming at it this season again against the Niners. Definitely a tough team. Um, t- first team we'll break down is going to be the, the Niners uh, offense on on paper. One of the best offenses in the league, um, hands down. Look at this team, and they should undoubtedly win the Super Bowl on, on paper. Uh, the team's coming in at 12-5. and five with a stacked offense um i think a better offense than than the chiefs hands down uh minus the quarterback position and possibly is questionable at the tight end position but with brock purdy um second season mr irrelevant um a guy that was taken last last in the draft in uh in the 2021 2022 season uh definitely definitely impressive with the way that he's played um the kid has a bright, bright future in front of him and is going to be able to do a lot when it comes to uh, football. I mean, just, just the way that he's playing the game. He's learning learning how to read an offense, uh, struggles with his checkdowns at times. But I mean, like I said, he's a young quarterback, uh, definitely an overlooked quarterback, being the position he was taking the draft by the Niners. Um, beat out you know Trey Lance, who was their number one pick, a couple years ago as well. Uh, Garoppolo gets hurt, you know, last season. Trey Lance gets hurt last season. Purdy comes in. They think the season's done. He takes them all the way to the NFC Championship, you know, where they lost it. And I will put a lot of it on on the Eagles defense that stopped them last year. Uh, They hurt Purdy. He hurt his hand. He couldn't throw the ball. Um, And they, you know, they didn't have other quarterbacks to really use at that point. They were down every quarterback in the league at that point. Um, hence why the, the new rule came in that they can now suit three quarterbacks as needed in the playoffs, uh, so this ha- doesn't happen. Um, but to complement Purdy on the offense, they have Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, uh, George Kittle. I mean, those three alone are their best, so, some of the best receiving cores in the league. And I, yeah, I will say tight ends and receiving core as well because they block a lot of times because they do, they do catch the ball, they do score touchdowns, they get yards. So, yes, they are receivers, but they also do a lot of blocking. Um, I'm, not, I'm not taking anything away from Jawan Jennings or like that. You know, or Chris Conley coming off the bench, Ray McLeod, a lot of those guys. Um, definitely a fun team to watch, entertaining. Uh, but, man, it's, it's going to be fun to watch Purdy do what he can do, um, open up the passing for uh, between Ayuk and Samuel and also, you know, getting Kittle involved as much as possible. Because uh, all it's going to do is that's going to open up the run game for by far one of the best running backs in the league uh, with Christian McCaffrey. The guy the guy leads the league, and I believe it's in touchdowns and yards. Uh, no, I think he's tied fourth in, uh, in touchdowns, like 14 yards, or 14 touchdowns. Uh, over 1,700 yards uh, rushing is first in the league. The guy is phenomenal. Um, somehow Carolina decided to let him go. Why? I have no idea. Uh, they, wanted, they wanted picks for him. They... Wanted to rebuild something, I don't know, but you you let this man walk off your team. Uh, like he got traded off the team, he didn't really walk, but he got traded from the team uh, and has found nothing but pay dirt within uh, the 49ers organization. The guy is phenomenal. He can he can hit holes hard. He can fight um, for more yards. Finds the end zone more times than not. Uh, and seeing this guy after the games, I've seen a lot of clips on TikTok and everything else. The guy is just battered and bruised, bleeding and everything else. Like, he just looks like he's been, you know, beaten, drugged down the street in, in a bar fight. It, it just, you know, and, it, and this may be very common for a lot of a lot of athletes hands down, but I don't 
see a lot of that. And I happen to see Christian McCaffrey post a lot of it on TikTok um, after his games and how, how beat up they are. But, I mean, you just see him in ice baths wrapped up, ice and everything else. And, you know, because football is a brutal game, um, one of the most brutal, and it's only getting softer to eliminate a lot of that brutality and, you know, other things too. But I'm not getting into all that. All that breaking any of that down, I want to stick to the funness of the Super Bowl and how entertaining these teams can be. Um, so breaking down who they have for the, the wide receivers within Debo Samuel, Brandon IU, because those are the two that I'll talk about. Juwan Jennings, you know, we'll be in there, but you look at these two. Um, Debo is a, is a phenomenal, strong receiver uh, who also step back and he'll play running back as well. Um, he'll, you may see him switch in with Christian McCaffrey and even Elijah Mitchell as well. Those two will hand off, they'll go back and forth. Um, and they may throw even Debo at Wildcat as well. He's, he's done Wildcat. He's gotten under center in, in the shotgun position. He's thrown passes. He's ran the ball. Um, he gets open field. He's quick. Uh, he can do, he can do damage. Uh, definitely a guy to watch and ha has hands that will, you know, cause a lot of safeties and corners to question, you know, <laughs> is he wearing stick on his on his gloves? Because the guy can catch. Um, but also, Brandon Ayuk is another one that can catch that can run routes. That is one that will find the end zone, that will find those openings and get to the get to the end zone any way possible. Um, another another fast receiver. Um, look forward to see if Debo Samuel gets covered up. Look for Ayuk to find the opening somewhere within the field in the center of the field is where he tends to tends to live. Um, Debo as well, they're, they're fighters. They'll get in the, they'll get in the middle and they'll fight for their position. Um, they know how, how to help Purdy out if he gets in a, in a bind. Uh, they'll move for him. You know, they'll, they'll find a way to get open. Um, the other one that will find a way to get open, no matter what, uh, is George Kittle. I mean, if you if you are a fan of football, you know who George Kittle is. Um, if you're a wrestling fan, you should know who George Kittle is as well. I mean, the guy's a huge wrestling fan as well. Um, He's been. He's not. A, he's not a Gronk, you know. Um, when it comes to wrestling, you know, he hasn't gotten in the ring a whole lot. He's been around. Um, I think he will in the future. He may be that Gronk style to come in. He may get the chance to to do what Gronk did. Um, guys, entertaining, energetic. Um, we'll talk trash on the field, but we'll also kid around the field and have some fun. Uh, look for him to get open as well, but also look for him to set some blocks and help McCaffrey or Purdy even get out the field. Um, the guy can get open as well. He will score score touchdowns. Um, but like I said, when, I, when I'm setting bets and things like that, look for Purdy to throw, you know, over one and a half touchdowns for sure. Um, McCaffrey to find the end zone. Uh, between those those three receivers, uh, Purdy throwing at least two, you know, over one and a half being at least two touchdowns. Uh, you know, Debo or are you going to get one of them? I think Kittle is, a, is almost a lock for a touchdown as well. Um, when it comes to playoff or Super Bowl style play, uh, I was going to say Super Bowl, or I'm sorry, uh, playoffs, look for Kittle to get to get in the end zone. Um, I would say out of the two between Debo and Ayuk, I would look for Ayuk to probably find the end zone as well. Um, there's a chance, I mean, you see McCaffrey get two plus touchdowns. I mean, at least at least two. You know, if he hits three, man, it's, I mean, big on him. But uh, definitely look for that. Uh, I do see see that happening when it comes to this offense. Very, very stout offense. Uh, I'm not going to get into too much of the you know the offensive line. But, uh, oh, I, one, one position that gets overlooked, obviously I just forgot about it, uh, is fullback position. And Niners do use the fullback position. Um, I'm glad I had the death chart in front of me, so I'm glad I have to scroll down it because I was just looking at the offensive line. But the fullback position in Kyle Juszczyk, that's another one. Uh, without him, a lot of their short yardage wouldn't be there. Um, they still utilize the fullback position, and I think it's a position that is drastically underused and overlooked. Um, I would want that position to come back because it is a fun position. And uh, go back to Mike Allstott style, style runner, uh, just to just to do the lower his head and run through anything in front of him. Doesn't care. Guy will do anything he can to get the yards, fight through it, just as strong as McCaffrey. And you look at those two, and that's a that's a one punch, one two punch duel right there that's that's tough. McCaffrey behind uh use check, you're you're gonna find Bader in either a first down or or a goal line touchdown. Um if Usechek doesn't get it himself. Because that's another one that could be 
that's another one that you can look at as well. If you want to place money on it, look for use check to find the end zone because I'm guessing that's probably going to be a high payout as well. Um, I don't I don't have the numbers in pull them up, but you know that's a, that's a plus side on that one for him finding the end zone. Probably a little bit lower than Elijah, Elijah Mitchell, but I would say use check probably has a higher chance of finding it. Uh, yeah, check that out. Look at them. Throw some parlays down. Have a little fun with it. Uh, but that's the the Niners offense broken down. Easiest way for me to, to kind of look at, and we'll switch over to the Chiefs' offense. Not a not a huge um, not a huge offense when it comes to these guys. Um, obviously, you have one of the best quarterbacks in the league, um, and Patrick Mahomes, uh, guy that will do anything for his team to get the win. Uh, also, will complain if he doesn't get the win. You know, he's he's emotional when it comes to the game. Uh, he's invested in the game. One of one of the greats right now in the in the league. Uh, one of the top quarterbacks. You know he's not he's not one that's uh, he's I had to describe him as tough. I mean he's a he's a pocket passer, but he'll run as well. Um, he he's crazy when it comes to his passes as well. He'll look one direction and throw another. Um, he'll flip the ball. He'll under underhand it. Um, I th- I'm pretty sure if he had the ability, he'd just run and kick it at somebody rugby style. Um, he'll find a way to get get the ball into somebody's hands, regardless of any position that he's in. He could be running backwards, up behind his back. Uh, anything like that either has happened or has a high possibility of happening with Mahomes. Um, the, the guy has evolved his game greatly, can break down a defense, uh, check down, audible out anything he needs to, and find a way to win. Definitely, uh, if the game gets away from him, that's where you'll see... Mahomes start to collapse. Uh, his emotions, I think, do tend to get the best of him. But hopefully, if it, if it does, he can get you know, get locked in and have a and have a fun game and not let it get to any words. It just completely crumbles. Um, at the running back position, they have Isaiah Pacheco, who is a young running back. Uh, dude runs hard. Dude runs like he hates the ground or hates whatever is running behind him. He's a fun player to watch. Uh, look for him to get the yards he needs, uh, fight for him. Uh, not a big blocker, I don't think. I don't see him as a, a guy that uh, is sticking a lot of people. Because like I said, he is, he is a little bit on the smaller side. But uh, he's definitely one that will he'll get in the way. He's not the one to knock, knock somebody down or really anything like that. He will, he will interrupt any blitzes or like that. But a uh, fun player to watch, watch him pound the ground to get anywhere. He'll more than likely uh, he'll find the end zone as well. The backup running back, uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, fun running back to watch as well. Uh, was taken high in the draft, I believe it was 22, uh, when he was taken out of, uh, you know, let's see, Texas, but I don't remember. Um, but again, another player that has been sidelined due to injuries, um, one that I, I'm hoping to see him use a little bit more. And I say that because my, my son has met him. Uh, super nice guy. Dude was so so nice when it came to talking with him and got his autograph. You know, a ton of pictures with him. Um, has like has cleats that he signed. He signed with him and everything else. And it's really cool just the interactions they have between each other. Um, and he he was hurt that season, so he didn't really get to do anything. Uh, but it's good to see him back playing in a minimal role at this point because you know he's he's the backup. He's not the starter anymore. Um, now there's a chance that uh, he he finds the end zone. Slim, slim chance, but you know it's always a chance. More likely not. Uh, within the the wide receivers though, this wide receiver core is young. Uh, there is some quote unquote veterans, I guess you could say, on here. Uh, within like Miko Hardman, who they just brought back, uh, MVS Marcus Valdez Scaling, who came from the Packers, had a a mediocre season over there with with Aaron Rodgers. Um, Kadarius Tony, who has been around, but he came from the Giants, had issues of supposedly staying healthy over there. Um, then he came out and said he was never hurt. They just told you know everybody that he was hurt. I really don't know too much about it. I'm not going to look into it. I don't really know. Um, similar things tend to be uh, seem to be coming out with him at Kansas City. I know he just had a baby. As well, so uh, they 
Chiefs came out and said he was hurt, but then he said he wasn't hurt. So I don't even know if he's playing in this game. Um, is he going to be missed? Probably not. Uh, MVS can easily step in like he has in the past. Uh, just depends on if he's either staying on size or can catch the ball. Um, but one, one standout receiver they do have is Rasheed Rice, uh, a young and up-and-coming wide receiver. The kid's fun to watch. Look for Mahomes to definitely get him the ball early and a lot. I will definitely uh, think that there's going to be probably plus side of 10 receptions or 10 targets uh, for for Rice in this game because uh, I do think they're going to they're going to blanket Justin Watson. Uh, they will do their best to cover about a Scantling or Tony, whichever one is out there. If they're both out there, then you know obviously they'll change in and out. But uh, trying to get these two. Covered will open up one or the other, but I think Rasheed Rice will find the end zone once at least. Um, but I think it'll be a entertaining one to watch if the if Mahomes and Rice can start connecting early. Then the the Niners defense is going to have a tough time, and then the one, the only Travis Kelsey that everybody now knows who he is, sports fan or not. If you're a music fan, you obviously know who it is because of Taylor Swift. She apparently has made him famous because he hasn't done anything else with himself. But uh, before that happened, this, uh, Travis has made himself known by his ability on the field. The guy is a phenomenal tight end, one of the top top two, top three tight ends in the league, one of the best in the league. Uh, you know, he's a fun player to watch, Ener energetic, entertaining, very emotional when it comes to the game. I mean, if you've seen, if you watched him, he's got an argument with the refs. He's thrown his towel at the refs, acting as if it's a flag, um, been ejected from the game for it. Um, again, another emotional player that, if he keeps his head right, he is a, a threat, a big threat on, on the field. Um, again, fun player to watch. He had some struggles towards the end of the, end of the season, kind of locked in the last couple games in the, in the playoffs, and look for him to do something big. I do see he's also going to be one that finds the end zone. Um, I do see Mahomes throwing for over three, uh, two touchdowns, at least three touchdowns in this one. One to, one to Kelsey, um, one if not two to Rice. Um, I think also Pacheco may end up with two or plus touchdowns, one rushing and possibly one check down that he takes in for a score. Um, definitely look for that. Like I said, if you're betting, look for these parlays. Have some fun with it. Definitely a fun one to look for. Um, I think that this offense here is uh, is definitely overshadowed uh, when it comes to the Niners' offense, though so not one that uh, you can you can count out. But on, on paper, they they don't add up to the Niners at all. Uh, switching gears to the defense, we'll go we'll cover the the Chiefs' defense. Um, not a not an overly exciting defense in my in my opinion. Uh, they do have a stronger secondary, I think, than they do uh, the up fronts. When it comes to their four up fronts, um, one standout obviously is Chris Jones. Uh, the guy held out, wanted to do something big with his contract, wanted money, so he was holding out. Um, ended up coming in, signing a contract. I'm not sure if it was multi or one year. I don't remember. Um, but man, he is a player to watch. The guy can get in the backfield and disrupt Purdy. You will see. Pretty missing checkdowns, scrambling around, possibly getting sacked multiple times. When this happens, you will see Purdy throw one, if not two, interceptions. Um, I do have Purdy throwing at least one interception in this game, for sure. Uh, I think he's thrown an interception in every playoff game that he's been in, last season and this season. Um, but definitely look for that to be the one, and the one to pick him off will be either uh, McDuffie or Sneed. I lean a little bit more towards Sneed getting the pick. Uh, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, count on either that Sneak can take it to the house on a pick six. Uh, but Jerry Sneak is fun to watch. Guy can lock down almost any receiver. Uh, is quick, but he's a corner, so he's not he's not over the top safety on that. Looking down, he's he's man up, he's zoning something like that. But he can read uh, read the read the plays, everything else uh, on the right side. Uh, Trent McDuffie, second year player. Fun player to watch. I uh, had, had the pleasure of meeting him last year also at the uh, training camp down in St. Joe, Missouri. My son had uh, got an autograph from him as well, a couple pictures with him. 
obviously it wasn't a meet and greet by any means, but it was just kind of one of those things of met him on the fence, talked to him for a quick second, he got a picture with him and everything else, then moved on. But um, a fun player. Hopefully he has something something big for him coming up. Um, I'd like to see him get a pick as well or something something big to you know to benefit the game as a, as a game changer in some way. Um, going over to linebackers, Willie Gay is a is a definite uh, definite threat when it comes to any, anything that they can do on that defense. He's a fun player to watch, energetic. Um, but yeah, it's just I can't I can't break down their defense too much because I don't I just, guys I don't I don't watch a whole lot to stand out. Um, but when it comes to like the Niners defense. Man, there's a lot. Um, there's one player in particular that I'll talk talk about last that um, if you follow close, you see what I'm wearing. You maybe already know who I'm talking about that went from Philly to the Niners. That was – it sucked to lose, but obviously, you know, money talks and people walk. So, uh, with that being said, the upfront guys are probably the ones I'll cover last, but obviously there's a lot, lot there. Uh, their secondary, Jair Brown. Guy can definitely, uh, as a strong safety, being one that will disrupt plays, uh, look for him to also do one, if not two, safety blitzes and get in there and possibly hit Mahomes or disrupt something. Um, he's one that will get in and disrupt anything he can. If not him, uh, Tashawn Gibson. Tashawn Gibson has the ability to disrupt many, many plays um, over the tops, uh, the speed to do it. Uh, look for Jair Brown to be the one to possibly blitz and uh, Tayshawn gets to be the one over the top with a, the possible picks if Mahomes do, does throw one. Um, this one's tough to, to see if Mahomes throws one just because, I mean, the guy has been around for a while, but he does get sloppy at times. He does force force throws, um, and these players can force him to throw, especially with those those up fronts that they have that we'll get to. Uh, when it comes to linebackers, I really don't have Javarius Ward. I mean, Fred Warner. Dre Greenlaw, I mean, those guys speak in their own. I don't really know too much about uh, Oren Burks, but they are a, they're a tough team. And, yeah, I, I, I do announce a lot of the players on this defense, but that's because they're, they're standout players. I think over over the Chiefs, because on, on paper, they definitely beat the Chiefs. Um, offense, defense, in my, in my opinion. Um, look for Greenlaw. Possibly to get in there and and disrupt a lot of things. Fred Warner, on top of that, um, mainly because of the front four that they have. Um, in my opinion, one of the best front four in the league as well, um, with exception to their left D end being Chase Young. Uh, Chase Young was a high prospect coming out of college. Went to the Commanders over in Washington. Had a very mediocre, if that, uh, career there in in his rookie contract. Uh, he was supposed to be really exciting coming out. Highlight reel was amazing. Just he, he was played with injuries. Um, couldn't stay healthy. Then ended up getting traded to the Niners, um, where he has since been questioned if his ability to commit to every play uh, since being on the field. Uh, I've seen, I've watched a few games with him and nothing, nothing outstanding, but I have read a few articles saying that there's a chance that they do bench him. Uh, I don't think they bench him. They may, they may limit his, put him on a play count, snap count of some kind, limit his play. They may bench him for the first half, first quarter. Um, well, he might, say, he might start and everything. I'm reading is not even true. So I mean, it's happened. It's on the internet. So newsflash: everything on the internet is not true. Um, but the other three, uh, Nick Bosa. I mean, what do you, what could you say that hasn't already been said about Nick Bosa when it comes to the guy's ability? He's a monster. Um, same as his brother Joey over in uh, with the Chargers. The guy's impressive. He will disrupt anything and everything he can. Definitely look for him to get one one sack at least. I think in, in this game um, to disrupt the the run game, uh, throwing anything, checkdowns. Uh, he can he can read. It. He can get around the end and get to and get to Mahomes if he needs to. If that does start to happen, you will see. Some sloppy throws from Mahomes, uh, some scrambles that you know may end up breaking out, and he can he can run for for a long time. But uh, Arik Armstead, another player that can you know destroy an offensive offensive line, he can break through. He's strong, tough guy. Uh, I, 
I don't see sacks or like that, but I do see him disrupting plays, um, closing up holes real quick. The guy has an impressive wingspan. He can definitely shut down, you know, smaller running backs, which Pacheco is, and same with Everett Delaire being smaller. Uh, just watch for him to swallow up anything that comes up the middle at that, too. But my, uh, my man, Jam- Javon Hargrave, who left Philly last year, went over to the Niners. It sucks seeing him go, but um, seeing him back in the Super Bowl uh, in the season that he's had, not as good as the season that he had last year where he was tied for, if not leading the league in sacks last season. Um, an impressive player, a fun player. I do have, and I will put money down on him getting a sack and doing one of my favorite sack uh, celebrations of kicking the door down and just jumping, getting energetic. Uh, I loved it. I did it all last season when Harry was sacking with Philly. Uh, so I will, I will see them. I will see him get a sack. I do, I do see it happening. Um, so we'll see what happens. But I do see Kansas City coming up, coming out on top in this game. As much as it's going to suck because what happened in 2020, the Chiefs won, and then we got hit with the pandemic. So if we have a repeat, look out for whatever's happening next because Chiefs win. The world goes crazy, apparently. Uh, but I do want a fun game. I want an energetic game. I want a game that's going to keep my attention um, as well. So I don't want to blow out unless it's going to be like the, the Atlanta Falcons-Patriots game where you know the lead was blown third quarter comeback happens but again that was Tom Brady uh different different player different team different coaches you know just different times but obviously it wasn't a long time ago but um a lot of people were upset about that one Uh, I just want this one to be fun uh energetic and everything else uh I mean obviously kicking off the the Super Bowl I believe it's Reuben McIntyre doing the uh singing the national anthem uh, another bet you can throw down on the over-under. I can't remember if it's one and a half or two minutes for it, but they always have the over-under uh, for how long the the National Anthem will go. Look for that one. Uh, it's a fun one to throw down. But, you know, watch for her to do it. Uh, the Halftime Show, which is one that anybody that is ever over here, either it's a lot of times the girls that are you know over here, they don't really care about the game too much. They want to know who the Halftime Show is, You know, be it Rihanna, Lady Gaga, whoever else they bet, Eminem, Dre, and all those guys that had had it that year. Um, Usher is this year. I mean, I grew up listening to Usher. He's been around for a very long time. Uh, in my opinion, if you want to have fun with it, you bring out Lil Jean and uh, Ludacris and let them do yeah. I mean, if you can get Ludacris on stage and then throw Lil Jean on top of it, you're going to have a, a banger halftime show because he's going to go nuts. Um if not overshadow Usher in, in his own way. Uh, but should be a fun one. Definitely keep keep a lookout for anybody that may pop up in the halftime show. Uh, also, there's Gronk who's supposed to kick his, his field goal again. I believe he made it last year. A lot of people are saying he won't make it this year. I don't even know if it was televised last year. It just happened to pop up, I, or I missed it. I don't know. Um, but I don't remember seeing him kick it. I do remember them saying he made it. I think I remember. I'm not sure. Um, but... This year also, they will have a uh, Nickelodeon is going to have a Super Bowl uh, on on Nickelodeon. They're going to show it. They're going to air it. Um, so I will have that one on as well for the kids, so they can kind of watch that one. Or you know, they're probably not going to watch it. I'll I'll check it out every now and then and see what they do with it. But it should be another fun, entertaining one. But that should be on Nickelodeon. Uh, Aaron, obviously, at the same time as Super Bowl, just they have their own overlays. If you've never caught a Nickelodeon game. Check that out. Um, my kids enjoyed it. They have a lot of slime. You'll see SpongeBob and all the other characters that they have. Um, if there's a long play from one of the players, they'll have dust kicking up from behind them. You know, things like that. They throw a lot of animations on there. Um, just fun stuff for the kids to kind of get kids excited about football at that point because it is it is a growing sport, a sport that is, you know, always changing, obviously, also to try and make it more safe and whatnot. You know, a lot of people think it's ruining the game. The safer they try to make it, but, you know, we'll get into that one another time. Because uh, coming up next season, I do plan on doing a lot more of, the, of covering a lot more games uh, the weeks coming up. And if we get into it, we do we get good feedback from it. I may start throwing out some ideas on bets. Um, but, again, I'm not encouraging anybody to bet money. Don't waste your money. Um, get a you know, problem with it, don't do it. Uh, this is just money that I have set aside that I just play with. And I'm not dropping thousands of dollars. I throw like a 
maybe a hundred bucks and I break that down into multiple different bets to try and make my money back. So play with it, have fun with it. Uh, but again, enjoy the Super Bowl. Chiefs Niners, uh, it should be a fun one. I do, uh, I do, like I said, I do see the Chiefs come out on top on this one. Uh, I am also looking forward to the commercials. Always one of my favorites. I always love watching the commercials. I look forward to the Doritos commercials. Um, there's a big one that they're teasing right now of uh, a bunch of the players. It looks like it's, uh, I think it's South America because they do play in Brazil next year. So maybe the opening that they have for Brazil, because um, it looks like it's in a kind of a street market style. You know, Devontae Adams is there, but it's uh, it's one of the players I remember. Um, and maybe C.K. Stroud was another one, but uh, I think it is South America, and I think they're leading up into uh, the kickoff for Brazil. And that's going to be, I know it's Philadelphia, has the first game September 8th, I think it is, in Brazil. That's supposed to be the season opener, which is the first time they're having one in South America and Brazil. Um, not sure the Eagles are playing, but they did announce that uh, recently in the past past week, I think they did. Um, but yeah, that should be a good one. Look out for the commercials there, and I do think that's the announcement they're going to have. If it's not, I'll be impressed, but uh, we'll see. Look for it. Have fun with it. Um, plenty of food. <laughs> Real quick, some of the things that we'll break down is the food that we have. Wings is a, is a guarantee I always make every year. Wings are my go-to when it comes to football games, period. Super Bowl is a, is a big one. Uh, I will have plenty of wings around um obviously drinks of any kind uh i don't drink too much anymore so beer will be around but you know i'm not a shot guy i don't do stuff like that anymore it's just the age body can't do it body hates me when i do it um nachos more than likely as well something quick and easy nachos are just dips no we keep it pretty simple only thing i really cook is is the is the wings um uh, they may do like the the seven layer bean dip things like that Plenty of fruit for the kids as well. You know, I don't do anything crazy. Um, we don't order pizzas. I don't like I don't like ordering stuff on those days because I already know the the people that are delivering things are pretty much busy as hell. So I, I go to the store and I make it all myself. Plus, it saves me a lot of money too. Um, if I wanted to not worry about it, not have the headache, then yeah, I would order it. But I enjoy that. I enjoy cooking for everybody um, that comes over. So enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Uh, look for Philly to be there next year after they get their first win in Brazil. Uh, and also, going for the Chiefs in this one. Wouldn't be surprised to see Niners pull it out, but uh, I think it'll be a good one. Hopefully, it'll be entertaining and fun. Be safe, have fun. Till then, bye, bitch.